really happy to be here with Helen Giles, who's going to be sharing with us the beginning of her business journey. And I think a lot of you will be um, will relate to this because a lot of you watching are also beginning your business journey. And even those of us who are so-called further along always uh, always enjoy, I, I always enjoy and benefit from hearing the, the, the insights uh, that are coming through as someone begins their, their journey. Um, so Helen, first of all, thank you for doing this. Welcome. <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you, George. It's always a pleasure to spend yeah. time with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Helen is a member of my group coaching program this year, and uh, she's always been so helpful among the communities that she's been part of that I've experienced her in. So really grateful um, to be able to bring her here. And so we're going to be doing this several times, you know, the interviewing Helen several times this year. So you'll get to see the progress uh, along the way. So the beginning is where we start. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but 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 yes, pressure. No. Loving, right. <laughs> supportive, accountability publicly. Um, so uh, the beginning is where we start. And, and I'm excited about this. So first, I know because you are still shaping your introduction about your business and your work, um, I want you just to tell us what you've got thus far. And you'll just keep on uh, telling us what the iterations are as we as we talk again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's been fun actually to practice because that's something that you're such a supporter of for just practicing. And that's been yeah. really helpful for me. Yeah. And hearing other people do theirs has been super helpful too, because there are things that I've been trying to work out in my own languaging that other people have already worked out. Yes. <laughs> so I've exactly. been able to take snippets yeah. from other people's intros and be like, Ooh, I love how they said that piece or, Ooh, right. I love that, that wording. Um, and I have a doc where I just like copy and paste and add all these different awesome. pieces to it and then slowly meld it into what works for me. Um, so I just want to pause you right there. I mean, that is yeah. a great idea. Um, <laughs> I wish I had been that organized <laughs> and I, I should probably should start being that organized. No. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a really organized way. If you can be, like you said, part of some community, whether it's mine or somebody else's where you can practice your introduction, regular basis, hear others do it. I love that you're, you're taking down these words and, and snippets and, and shaping it because words have power and yeah. uh, certain words really resonate with you. And probably will resonate with your ideal audience. And you're going to test it, of course, with your audience over time. And But yeah. tell us what you've got thus far. Yeah. So um, I am a teacher and a nurturer at heart. Um, and I love to use a systems approach to bring more structure, organization, and grounding to the often chaotic process of inner healing, personal work, personal growth work. Um, I help people see, understand, and feel their way through the various threads that structure their lives um, and shift them as they want to. Um, I am focusing on spiritually oriented people. I haven't quite figured out within people what, <laughs> what segments to work with. I tend to work actually a lot with um, people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, especially parents, um, which is something I'm still wrapping my head around because I'm young and there's a part of my brain that says oh people wait those people are young too to late in life would not want to work with me <laughs> um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it i do tend to attract just that audience i tend to resonate with a lot um and uh people and, who and, and have, why do you think that is do you have any clues uh, into i I'm not totally sure. I mean, I've always been an old soul, I will say. Mm -hmm. So I've never resonated with people my own age. I've always felt mm -hmm. 20 years older than everybody my own yeah. age. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. And then uh. I think the other part is actually that my parents are in that age range. And so I've done so much work on my own self, my family dynamics, my family relationships, Interesting. Um, that I tend to provide people who are also struggling in their family dynamics and family relationships with like what their kids could see or say if their kids had the emotional growth work or like communication skills. Like I tend to see things from that perspective and can communicate yeah. that in a way, especially in families where there is growing distance or hardship or past hurts. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if that is yeah. an audience that sticks or not. That's so interesting that 
the yeah. work it's true like the work we do within ourselves somehow reflects out and this is one part where i do believe in the law of attraction <laughs> you know like i do believe the law of attraction attracts to us the kinds of people we are ready for and um yeah so it's really really neat to hear you say that okay so there's so much um you've been learning as you've been uh starting this business um I don't know where we want to start with this, but maybe maybe here's here's what I want to here's where I want to start actually. Um, <laughs> for those who are like in the beginning stage, and when I say beginning, I want to I want to first say like I see business, especially authentic business, as a spiral mm -hmm. of growth. Like well, maybe I'll I'll do it this way: spiral, spiraling to heaven. You know, <laughs> like as we grow more and more. And so, really, begin to me is begin again. Like we're, we're always beginning again, beginning yeah. again. And, and so, but, we, but you've been like, you started out like, oh, thinking a website was important and. Well, so tell it's about funny that. that you say begin again, because in many ways, that's one of the things I'm doing and encountering is that um, I know at different points, you've talked about this rubber band and it's like, yeah. if we start too far, it snaps back. Right. right. And I have started this business probably three or four times before. Um, but never made a lot of traction, like never actually kind of got it yeah. off the ground. It was always just kind of this idea that I wanted to do and I'd be really excited. I'd kind of take some forward motion, but not really enough or not really in any kind of consistent way. Mm -hmm. Um, by the way, is that a cat? This is my dog, Rosie. Oh, dog. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Oh, Rosie. Hello, Rosie. Rosie. Of course we have to bring the animals in. I know. So, so, so yeah, you, you, the rubber band, just for those who haven't heard me talk about it, like I talk about stamina and really growth. It's like you, like our, our capacity for any area of growth. It's like the rubber band where you stretch a little bit. And if you, if you consistently stretch a little bit, the rubber band gets more capable of holding more. But if you stretch too fast, too quickly, it either breaks, hopefully not, but uh, or it snaps back with violence. <laughs> and there's your, that's a cat, right? Yes, this is another okay. animal. I'm so confused. <laughs> all, the, all the animals. <laughs> okay. okay, both are black. That's why I'm like, wait, did I just see <laughs> Um Okay, so please keep going. So you you tried it before and it just never got yeah. traction. Yeah. For years, it's kind of been, I mean, I've had this dream of starting this business for years and I've gained a lot of growth in terms of universe and spirituality, like where I've been guided into the different jobs I've been working in, it feels like I was getting paid to learn all the solopreneur skills. You know, I've been working in digital marketing for over four years now, um, it, for mostly small businesses, small solopreneur yeah. type operations. Yeah. Um, but in my own self, doing it for my own self is a totally different ball game. So I can, you can have all the technical skills, but the readiness or the you know, visibility stuff or all the inner stuff that we encounter when we go to create something in the world of, of any kind um, is a different, it's a different game. Um, but then I think what happens is you try something and then, you know, my system would get overloaded and then it would basically snap shut. I'd yeah. shut down and I just wouldn't touch anything for months and months. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm going to try again. And I'd kind of get up the chutzpah to like do some things. And then I would just like go MIA and into what I call my hidey hole for another eight months or like, mm -hmm. um, but then each time you have more and more resistance because all the past times didn't work. And so that voice in your head says, oh, well, you can't really do this or, oh, it didn't work before. Or, you know, that you're never going to be able to get this off the ground because X, Y, Z, you know, it's just, every time you start to have the pattern that proves back to yourself that you can't get it off the ground. Wow. Um, so that, that's so good. I, that's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. I actually, I know that from my own experience and I've seen that in other people, but just the way that you, you just uh, described it, mm -hmm. like lit up something for me. So thank <laughs> you for that. So now this mm -hmm. time, how are you getting the getting over the resistance to start again? And mm -hmm. how are you starting? Yes. Um, I my word for the year is slow. And I Interesting. <laughs> I'm realizing that I have to go really slowly. And that the part of my brain, when I start to take action, when I begin again each time, says I should be here 
but mm. I'm here. So when yeah. I start to take action, it's like I'm I'm actually trying to catch up. So then it tries to make me move faster to get to where it says I should be. Um, and instead I'm having to get rid of all of that and just move really slowly. Even if my, you know, that part of my brain says you need to move faster. You need to catch up. You need to build the audience. You need to build the website. You need to do all of the things. Um, the truth is that I am not there and I'm having to reckon with the fact that I am truly just at the beginning and that I'm not where my brain says I should be. Um, but by allowing myself to do that, by moving slowly, by taking actually baby steps, which is much slower than what that part of my brain says I should be moving. It's the only way that I seem to be able to move forward um, with any sort of consistency. Mm. And in terms of where I'm beginning, that same part of my brain used to say that beginning was all the action steps, was all the visible stuff you know, posting on social media, building the website, starting a newsletter, you know, all these things that are important and are necessary as we build and grow and they're visible, <laughs> they allow people to see us. But the steps that I had skipped pretty much every other time was really getting grounded in myself first. Um, mm. Who do I want to be in the world? How do I want to be of service? What does this business want to be? what, you know, all of those kinds of questions. And I think the challenge is that sitting with those questions and getting clear on those questions is really important, but there's not a lot of tangible outcomes. I can't yeah. sit with those questions for two hours and then, oh, I have this product that I just built <laughs> or I didn't have a newsletter and now my newsletter is written and sent. You know, there's not a lot of like tangible things. Mm -hmm. You sit with those questions and you get some clarity and you get some grounding, but at the end, you don't actually have a lot to show for it in this very tangible way. So it feels like, or at least again, to that part of my brain, it feels like you're not doing anything. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you're yeah. not actually taking action. Yeah. And, and I'm not necessarily, but it's a really important part of the process that I'm realizing now that I had never really done before. Mm, interesting. Yeah. 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 I bet a lot of people watching, listening can relate um, to that feeling of ungroundedness and therefore um, needing to ground. So tell us a bit more, what is helping you find more grounding so that you can actually go and create the posts or the website or the whatevers? Hmm. I think the thing that I'm, well, gosh, there's a bunch of different things I could say. Sure, One sure. Of them, say it all. <laughs> a lot of it is what I learned in TLC. Um, is Which is now called Joyful Productivity yes. Program. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so much of what, what I've had to learn is that to be in business, I actually had to get solid and consistent in myself first. Mm. Like just me, my life, that to sell, especially in this kind of business, something that is heart, heart based, that, that is asking other people to be in their hearts too. coaching, yes. deep inner work, spirituality, yes. like these are things that mean things to us. So ultimately anything that I sell or offer the world, like I am the product. And there's mm -hmm. a certain reckoning that has to happen of realizing that I, I am selling me. I'm selling my wisdom, my knowledge, my yeah. insight. Um, your energy signature, your my presence, energy signature, my values. vibration. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and to do that, I needed to actually first go back to basics of like, can I go to bed at the same time every day? Can I wake up at the same time, same time every day? Am I eating foods that feel good to my body? Am yeah. I meditating every day, which for me provides my like anchor point and a space to process my emotions in my life? Um, things like journaling or movement, you know, exercising. It's so basic that it feels kind of funny or silly to be talking about it, but that had to come first <laughs> just for my own nervous system regulation and to have a sense of solidness, trust in myself, showing up for myself, having a solid base to then offer because I am ultimately offering myself. Yeah. You know, my wisdom, my vibration, my energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that has been really important first. It's you say it's so basic, but it's like <laughs> so many even adults like so many of us need to return to the basics. I mean, 
it's like, oh, sleeping on time. No, that's a big deal for most of us, right? Yeah. Like sleeping or getting enough sleep, um, which usually means to have a good evening rhythm, which means to start our evening rhythm at a, at a reasonable time, <laughs> and routine at a reasonable time and stuff like that. And then eating well, constant, ongoing, you know, journey to figure out that better and better or to stick to it, that kind of thing. So good. Um, so yes, starting with essentially like self-integrity yeah. practices oh. that exactly. then kind of bolster your authentic confidence, mm -hmm. grounded, um, sort of grounded readiness for others to be able to hold others mm -hmm. in, in their transformation. So, okay. So that's really good. So you, you, you are, uh, working, uh, to continue developing your joyful productivity practices, super mm -hmm. important. So what else, what else helps you feel like, okay, I'm going to now be able to be more visible. Yeah. Um, I think one of the other things is things that's been really important for me is we talk a lot in this world, especially when we're moving through different emotional inner things, um, about the inner child relationship, you know, connecting with our inner child, yeah. healing our inner child, sitting with their fears or pain or, or emotions of any kind. Um, and I've done a lot of inner child work as I imagine many in your community have, this is not a new realm. Um, and I was, confused for a while why with the amount you know the years that I have spent doing this inner work why was this still such a challenge to be visible in the world and this dawned on me a couple of weeks ago um I'm actually very comfortable being in my inner child visibly you know mm -hmm. to be kind of to express to others fear or grief or anger big emotions I can do that with a fair amount of capacity I've built that muscle. Um, the part where I struggle is being in the inner warrior, the warrior, you know, being visible in this space of claiming that I do have things to offer. I have knowledge. I have wisdom. Um, I'm not just going to kind of bend. There are things that I actually believe to be true that other people may disagree with, um, to be strong in that kind of place and to really claim that amount of power and be visible in that, like I can claim her in my own self, fine, <laughs> but to be seen by the world as the inner warrior archetype in me um, has been that, that part I realized is that's the visibility struggle. Um, wow. And I think that that's something probably many people can relate to, but I do think especially women, you know, the way that our culture currently raises women is you know, you're supposed to be agreeable. You're supposed to be kind. Don't be mean. Don't, um, don't be too aggressive, you know, keep your voice quiet, be the, you know, provide for others, be of service, even, you know, even just in being of service, there is this way that service gets twisted to bend only to what others need, um, or what others think, or, oh, if, if they say something's right, it's right. But without really consulting your own self or your own needs or, or, or saying no, even something as simple as that. Um, and then to be visible from that place tends to have backlash. When we're kids, we get punished, whatever that looks like. It may not be abuse, but just, oh, time out. You know, that's something that I have definitely had to reckon with. Um, being mm. powerful, being strong, taking a stance on things, not being um, agreeable all the time. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Goosebumps as you talk about this stuff. Um, inner warrior. I haven't heard that term, or at least haven't heard it recently. And that's a really good term. Yeah. Uh, I can't as, claim it. As, I got it from someone archetype. else. But <laughs> sure, of course. No, I. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but it's but it's it's not out there enough. I guess is what I'm yeah. saying, or I haven't. I don't hear it enough, and I I like that archetype as a way as a kind of a role that you that you that you that you play as you as you become and uh yeah so so good um so um, unbelievable we're almost running out of time with our interview but i so i want to make sure we talk about two things one is um since we're going to check in on these interviews yeah. several times this year i want to hear about your priority so that next time we check in uh we'll be able to check in on, on how it's going with your priority or priorities 
And secondly, you could tell us about what your service currently is and what people might be able to, to hire you for. But um, but go ahead with your priority priorities first. Yeah. So in this vein of taking it slowly, um, this was actually something I realized just, I guess, yesterday or the day before, maybe. I always thought my website was the next step. Once Once I got clear, build the website. And what I'm realizing when I actually check in with myself is that the website still feels like this big thing. Um, whereas a newsletter feels more doable. I, I don't have that yet. I'm excited to do that. I've wanted to have a newsletter for a long time. Um, but it always felt like I had to, like something told me that I need to have my website done first and then the newsletter. So to get to the thing that I was excited about, I had to cross this big mountain, um, that was the website. And so I'm finally saying, oh, maybe I don't have to do that. Maybe I'll just build the, the newsletter and start to get consistent with that. Um, and same for YouTube videos. I always kind of thought I had to have the website before I do YouTube videos to have a place to send people, which makes sense. And maybe I just start doing the YouTube videos and let the website come when it comes. So all that to say, my focus for the moment is getting consistent with YouTube videos and uh, putting together a newsletter um, and doing that each week and enjoying Excellent. that writing process. Awesome. Amazing. So that that means you're going to create uh, both in writing and in videos, which I love. That means you really both uh, the 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 sort of the, the two extremes, I guess, um, covered. And uh, I love it. I love it. So where shall people I don't know if you have a link yet for your newsletter. Um, obviously, I could put your YouTube channel uh, below. Yeah. But um, yeah, can people sign up for your newsletter yet? Yes, I will pass you. I don't have it like in this moment, but that's yeah, actually on but my by list the time tomorrow. we upload this, I will, yeah. I will uh, put the oh. link. So that's great. So please folks follow along Helen's <laughs> journey. You could do it through the newsletter um, just to be sure you get the, get the, uh, her, her um, writings and, uh, and in your newsletter, will you link to YouTube sometimes? Yeah. Your videos? Yeah, okay. I so love sharing yeah. my voice, but also resources. I love being, yeah. you know, I send things that I'm interested in or vibing go. on yeah. um, as well as whatever videos or things that are, are good. coming. Through. Okay. Okay. Very good. And uh, what about your current offer or offering? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's still coming together as I figure sure. out yeah. what I want to do and be, but yeah. I think at the moment I'm offering uh, intuitive readings. Uh, I love to work towards wholeness and balance and that sense of um, working across the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual planes. I have this way of bringing structure and organization and bringing to light things that people can't see because we're not single points in time. We are ultimately threads and all of the threads that collectively make who we are in this moment also relate to things from our past, whether that's in this life, past life, ancestral lineage, mm -hmm. experiences we've had, who, who the things that make us who we are. So when we want to shift something in ourselves today, we often have to um, engage with the threads and how those connect to all the beingness that we've had up to this point that has put that thread in place. Right. So um, right. I offer intuitive readings, basically helping people gain clarity and feeling their way through those threads of who they are to be able to shift them. Awesome. Great. Wonderful. Well, I look forward to, you know, uh, getting, <laughs> getting updates from you and sharing that, you know, we'll, we'll do this again in a couple months. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for your courage <laughs> and um, your experiments of visibility. Uh, so thank thanks. You. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. It's been great. I'm so glad to be here. And yes, here's to the next few months. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Thank you. <laughs>